Hi everybody, uh, my name is Benjamin Friesen. I'm a uh, Google certified teacher, Google Apps certified trainer. I'm also uh, um, a founder of Flipped Education and I'm happy to be um, serving as sort of host and moderator of this uh, EDU on air event. If you want to uh, find out more about the EDU online uh, on air series, what I would just do is Google that. Uh, and there's great events happening. I was uh, checking out a few of them last night, just little bits and pieces. The great thing about them is that they're all on YouTube so that you can watch them anytime, anywhere. And uh, so I think they're going on for a few more weeks and they've been going on or, or, or going for the past two months or so. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a quick uh, overview of that. Um, I'm a digital content specialist in the Hopkins Public Schools and, and as I said, Flipped Education. I'm a founder of Flipped Education. What we do is provide professional development to um, uh, about authentically integrating technology into the classroom uh, to amplify learning. And uh, this is, today is really my passion project. This is uh, Google Earth and Google Maps and I'm really thrilled about uh, being able to talk with you and share uh, some of my ideas about them. The whole point of this little session here today is to, to, to provide like a nice little entry point so that you can hopefully get some solid tips to make the map the book and that's what I really want to try to emphasize. And it doesn't have to be something that you focus on over and over and over and, and spend months and get into HTML code. Uh, basically what I want to do is just uh, show you some easy entry points about how you can leverage these tools, uh, maybe as a classroom starter, maybe as like that little engagement piece and have you run from there because it's about opening the door. That's what I feel like I want to do today and then I'll let you explore. There's tons of great resources out there and there's lots of people doing really great things. So um, I have a few people joining me uh, and they'll pop in probably um, as we go here and I'll have them introduce themselves as they, uh, as they pop in. But I just wanted to let you know that um, if you're watching this on the live stream, what, what I would recommend doing is you can open it up on to um, and post comments into the actual events uh, underneath the, the live stream and what I'll do is I'll try to moderate that and uh, you can check that out as we go. Uh, let me hop over here. I have a bunch of different resources that uh, I have uh, set up for you and uh, on the Google On Air page you can uh, check those out. Let me hop over. And um, I have all the resources here linked uh, for all of the view YouTube watchers that are watching um, after the fact. What I'll be doing is posting that, um, I'll po be posting that information into um, the comments in YouTube so that you can see these actual pages. But then again, um, all the resources um, are here. Um, and again, if you just Google um, EDU on air, you'll, you'll get there and uh, you can just search for um, Google Earth and Maps in your classroom tomorrow or, and pick me off the schedule because it's all listed by date. It should be very easy for you to find. Okay, I also put those on the Google Plus page. So uh, those are a bunch of uh, things for you to move forward with. Let's just um, get back to uh, the window here and um, if you, like I said, I will uh, be looking at those comments to try to pick off some uh, questions here and there so that you, you can see those and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. All right, uh, what this, like I said, this is my uh, a passion project of mine and one of the, the three things I'm really going to focus in on was, number one is engagement. Uh, when I walk into the media center at my school and there are students using these tools, that's an indication that I should be using them too. And so what I love is the fact that they're engaging naturally. Uh, the iOS devices are awesome. It's, uh, it even brings it to a new level because the kid's very tactile and the kids are uh, touching it and moving in and spinning in and zooming out. And they have some really new features that I think have actually been migrating from the iOS devices into the full baked version online and that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. The other thing that I really want to do is focus on the, the, the process that this has to be guided. Uh, new teachers need to hear that veteran teachers have failed before them and people that are entering into the whole technology world need to know that uh, people like me who love this stuff and do it all the time have had some epic failures. Like uh, 
you can't just turn them loose into Google Earth because they're going to end up in three places. They're going to end up on their, um, they're going to end up on the, uh, like in, in their backyard. They're going to go to Street View and they're going to look around and that's all very um, engaging and so you can use that to your advantage. They're going to go to the flight simulator and they're going to go to explore places like Area 51 because those places are really cool to actually check out. But, Uh, and so I think it's important for you to know, sorry, I'm inviting some people quick. I think it's important for you to know that, uh, that you have to really guide the experience. And so what I'm really trying to do is focus on how to um, got, make this a guided experience. And I know that you can have students be creators in this process, and I feel like that's a higher level thing. And I'm kind of focusing it more along the lines of this is an amazing storytelling device. and. Uh, I'm, t I'm making uh, teacher-centered activities that the students are going to follow. So it's kind of a scaffolded approach. And I really like this for storytelling. I'll give that a second. Or I'll give uh, an example of that in a moment, What, uh, how you can use that to tell stories. OK, we have somebody joining us. Uh, Terry, are you there? No, she's not there. She's going to come back in a minute, apparently. So what I'm going to do is I have about a five-minute little presentation that I'm just going to go through. And I told you that I'm going to try to provide multiple entry points, like little things for you to, to come into the classroom and to use Google Earth successfully for a two-minute thing, two-minute thing. And then what you would then do is uh, build on that and then maybe go to your traditional activity. But you hooked them with Google Earth or Google Maps. And that's cool. And But this is just a glimpse of what is possible when you start going into it a little bit more, a little bit deeper, and uh, that's going to be uh, what I'm going to show you next. Now, for you Google Hangout people, this is like a pro tip, all right? If you're doing a Google Hangout on air, what it's doing is it's going to YouTube, and there's some uh, things that get cut out. So for example, if I did this tour that I'm going to do now, and I actually did it in Google Earth, it wouldn't actually show up, or parts of it wouldn't. So what I cheated, I did this for a conference, and I actually recorded the whole thing ahead of time, you know, like downloading YouTube videos so that nothing goes wrong in class. And so uh, one of the things that I did is I videoed this, and so you're going to see it actually playing like a movie, and I'm going to talk over it, because that's my storytelling elephant. Uh, elephant element to this whole thing. And so what I'm going to actually do is uh, uh, play that for you. Uh, before I do that, is Terry there now? Okay, we'll come back. All right, so I'm going to go to screen share. I'm going to select my movie that I have for you, and I'm just going to double check that it's actually playing, which it looks like it is. And uh, I'm just going to let this go here. All right. Uh, so what you're watching now is Google Earth. You can see that it's uh, it's moving, and I've I bought a I did buy a 3D mouse, a $99 3D mouse, so I can get some of these subtle movements that you're going to see. But for the large part, you can do most of this without actually having any technical skill whatsoever or tools whatsoever. But one of the things that I want to make sure that I do today is is I make sure that I dispel the myth that these are tools that are for uh, social studies teachers and science teachers. And I think some of the most powerful ways, uses of uh, these tools that I've actually seen are with um, math teachers and language arts teachers. And I'll share some of those different examples in a moment. But what I want to do is to try to show you how how can you put your content on onto the map and how can you make the map the book. And we're going to run into a few little streaming issues here. You, you're already starting to see a little that. It's probably slowing down and, and moving a little bit jerky. But what I mean by this is if you are uh, if you are actually uh, looking at this if you're looking at this, what you're one of the things I wanted to do is give you a tangible example of what it would be like to have um, a math, for example. So why couldn't a building become something about perimeters or angles or diameter or um, quadrants and having the students actually figure out some of this stuff? And and some of these uh, examples that you're looking at are actually just straight from a a, a great somebody who's generating some great map stuff or who historically did, uh, and that's Tom Barrett from the UK. And he has a lot of differentiated assignments in Google Maps, and I just think they're, it's a great example of how you could put math. So why couldn't like a plaza in Europe be in a geometry assignment or, or something like that? And so what I'd like to 
do is to have you think outside the box like that. Like, how could you connect your content? How could you connect your content to the map and actually engage students um, using it? So uh, we're going to fly back over here. Probably the best example of uh, Google Earth, and really what put it on the map in education is actually the Google Lit Trip. So if you haven't seen that, then make sure that you go Google Lit Trips right now and uh, go check it out. But uh, Jerome Berg was an a Apple, um, um, well, a Google certified teacher, Apple, Apple distinguished educator. But one of the interesting things is I actually watched his on-air thing last night, or at least about five minutes of it, and I just got a uh, a taste for what they were talking about and uh, one of the great things about the on-air series is that you can go check those out. But really what it's about is it's providing that differentiated approach. It's about putting the, uh, the content in the map and giving the students a different way to actually inter interact with it. And oh sorry and uh, let's go back. I'll hop in sh share screen. And uh, what, it's, what it really does is it really supports, I think, uh, you know, if, if reading isn't the best way for you to get information, then what it really allows you to do is it um, allows you to experience the content in a different way, like this interactive way. There's pictures, there's links, the students can go explore things if they want. And what I love about these differentiated assignments is that um, it provides support for, like, the struggling reader and for the, uh, the kids. Um, and uh, who are um, at the high end too because they can go extra credit. Now what you're looking at here and uh, what you're looking at here is a project of mine that I do with my students. This is uh, Midwest Geology and one of the things that you uh, see here is um, lots of different place markers and uh, um, polygons and things that students have actually created. Now we actually did this whole assignment in Google Maps and one of the things I love about Google Maps and Google Earth is that they talk to each other and uh, they're totally, they go back and forth really, really clear, clearly. And so one of the things that is awesome about this is that the students actually generated all of this content and they worked in small groups. This took about two or three days. Now I may appear to be a hard and old boring chunk of quartzite, but I was once, no, twice, something else. Hard to believe, huh? Well, let me tell you a little about my life. I was born millions and millions of years ago, many miles underground in a large chunk of cooling magma. Okay, so I just let that play and I checked on the comment stream. It looks like there's a couple people that are getting on and it looks like Peggy's sharing some stuff which is cool. Uh, but anyway, the thing I love about that student project is that what we did is we were able to create it in Google Maps and I'll give an example of that today and we can play along. Hopefully I'll invite you all to the map and you'll all be able to, we'll, we'll be able to interact in that space together. But one of the things that you can then do is you can display it in Google Earth. And what's really cool about that is the students get to see their final work in Google Earth. And then all of a sudden they're like, this is the thing I played in the Media Center and now my content is in there and that's really brilliant. Uh, so one of the great ways um, I think like, okay, so this is way number one to use um, Google Earth in your classroom is you can take your students anywhere. So I live in Minnesota. I should have said that at the beginning. Uh, Minnesota in the middle of the Midwest, you know, my students maybe haven't been a lot of different places. And one of the things that you can then do is take your students anywhere. Like you can go street view and you can uh, go to Chinatown and see that glimpse of uh, like this is in the United States and you can show that that perspective to your students and, and take them anywhere in the world. Now you can't see street view um, everywhere but um, you can get a glimpse of uh, what, at least what it's like from above uh, and so anyway here's just like a little glimpse of that feature. And so really that's, that's in my, that's my nutshell of, of how um, kind of an advanced way. So what you did, you saw a lot of movement there. You saw that that was just uh, essentially a presentation or a tour that I played. I hit OK and it just uh, played through and um, I just talked over it. And so I've done some really successful th things like that in the past where I basically took a, a part of my book 
And it might have been that introduction, like, here's a great story about an awesome earthquake that happened sometime in history. It just happened to be the biggest earthquake ever, you know, and they devote a little piece in the book like this big to it. Well, you can blow that out of the water with Google Earth, and I have a tour if you want to share it with you, and you can just contact me. But then one of the great things is, is that you can tell that story for kids, and when you start the unit with the Earth spinning in front of you, and you're zooming in, you're watching plate tectonic animations and YouTube and all of those different types of things, uh, there's some really cool things uh, that you can that you can do. I'm just going to try to invite a few more fun people here and, and see. Terry, are you here now? Yeah, I don't know. She's going to hang out, maybe listen. Um, so anyway, um, it looks like just check in here. Oh, Diane's in. Hi, Diane. Can you hear me? Yes. I've awesome. got a I've got to pause the feed over here. There we okay. go. Um, all right, Diane, will you quickly introduce yourself? I know you only through Twitter, and I saw some of the map stuff you did at ISTE, so you have some nice perspective here to add, so I'd love it. Sure, hi. Um, my name is Diane Main. I'm in San Jose, California, and I uh, am the Assistant Director of Instructional Technology for the Upper School of the Harker School, which is a private independent school here in San Jose. And I've done a bit with Maps and uh, Google Earth, and uh, also taught people who are, were primarily educators in K-12, but who were getting their masters in educational technology. And we had a, a one-credit seminar class that was on geo tools, so mapping and, and Earth maps and some other things, uh, including some activities like geocaching. So uh, I I like to get teachers integrating especially Google Maps because it's a, a, a kind of an easy step for most teachers. Um, Google Earth, they like to play with, but when you start talking about creating content, it gets a little hairy um, going from platform to platform, things like that. So Maps is a good uh, baby steps kind of way of getting people into it. Totally agree. I When I go to conferences and talk about Google Earth, I talk about it like dating somebody for five years. <laughs> and it really takes a long time to understand the ins and outs. And it's getting better, so like to cut in the paste and the images. You don't. You have to know less HTML now than right. you do, but um, I don't know. It's pretty cool. There's some uh, cool features. Okay, so for those of you following, thanks, Diane. Uh, mm -hmm. For those of you following in the uh, stream, I did put a link to the map. Um, so um, I did talk about these things being totally interchangeable. So like Google Maps is kind of like Google Earth Junior. And so what I'm going to do is hop over to the map right now, and uh, I'll screen share it so that you can see that. But um, you can all join me in the map so that we're all sort of in the same uh, place, even though we're not. And if the cool thing is if you're on YouTube watching this after the fact, um, well, you can, you can go to the map right now, because if you check the comment stream in YouTube, it'll be there. And then that'll be really fun for you, because then you can play along while, while we do it, and, and you'll be seeing what we did. OK, so um, what I'm going to do is I guess I'm going to go from right to left. I'm just going to hopefully get this to um, render a bit more here. But one of the things that I want to do is show you I'm going to go from right to left across the top of the screen. And they have these little icons in the upper right-hand corner. And, and these are just easy, quick ways for you to uh, navigate. Sometimes you, it's just if you've never messed around with this. So for example, you can click the map view, and the map changes to map. So like, for example, on an iPad and stuff, um, you're going to get it load much faster if you're in the map mode. But then you can also go back to satellite. But what's also cool is they have this thing called Earth View. And you might need plugins. So this is my, where some of you are going to peel off and realize that you got to go download something. But don't do it now, or you'll spend the whole time downloading. But one of the things that I'd recommend that's really cool is this is now Google Earth. So we're actually looking at a map that I've been using with uh, for different things. And then the upper left-hand corner on the left-hand side, let's see um, if I... I know I can't zoom in like all my usual Mac tricks, but, um, well, you can see my cursor. It's right here. And there's, there's uh, what's really cool about it is this top one, if you hover over it, it says, hey, that one, move that one if you want to look around. So I'm looking around. Yeah, that's cool. 
And then this bottom one moves you around. So if you hover, it actually tells you what it does. And then this is a slider, so you can zoom in and out. And so what I'm, what I'm essentially doing right now is I'm looking at Google Earth in my browser, which is actually uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, and, and that's really, really, really neat. Um, and so if I can hear my computer just totally humming right now. So what I'm going to do is go back to satellite just because we're streaming this. And that will probably take a little bit less uh, computer power. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so basically what we're doing is we're looking at that. One of the other cool things in the upper right-hand corner is we got traffic, photos, weather, weather cams, webcams. And uh, these are some great, uh, these are little layers. And one of the things I really like to do is challenge teachers to think about it like this. It's your job for students to construct the knowledge and to give them the different pieces. And one of the great things about Google Earth and Google Maps is that you have all of these different layers that you can work with. And so... Um, if you have your students check all the webcams, all of the weather cam, all the weather, and all the photos, and all the traffic, this is like a total information overload. And that's what we want to avoid. So it's our job to try to construct, give our students the right layers of information so that they can uh, construct knowledge out of it. And then that's obviously where um, uh, they learn. And so. That's, that's one of the things, that's the reason that you would make your own content so that you can deliver exactly what your students, uh, what, what you want them to see. Okay, um, I just kind of was messing around in here and you might have missed it. So most likely, if you followed the link with me originally over here, it says, it should say cool places over here. But most likely you already went away from that. And I just want to let you know that over here there is layers. And whatever maps you have open, they'll all show up um, right down here. And they'll all show up down here, and they have check marks by them. This is like total Google Earth, Google Maps. They have like check marks by everything. But what you do is you check the checkbox, and then you can see that your map comes back. So that's one way to get rid of the junk on the screen that you don't want to look at. You just click the check mark. So. Uh, so anyway, layers, that's, that's something that you should know about. I've always had this desire. Um, on my, my, my student web page, uh, I had uh, webcams for like Old Faithful. Here, this is very impersonal. Let me just pop back here for a second. I had all these webcams for like Old Faithful and uh, the Volcano cams, and they were all on the West Coast, right? So my students would come first block and they'd be like, oh my gosh, it's still dark there. Like, why? And it's like, well, you know, it's on the other side of the earth. And west of us and the sun rises in the east. So there could be a fun whole inquiry thing that you would do just like with that by looking at webcams in different places. So just so, uh, let's go to the stream here and see if anyone's, okay, somebody just, uh, okay, they got uh, Phoenix there. All right. Um, somebody put into the stream uh, if there's a place that, that we want to explore a little bit. So I'm not just uh, coming up with my own examples the whole, whole time. So pop that in there and I'll try to pay attention to that. But what I'm just going to do is, is search for Versailles, France. Uh, this is my, my stock example for this, so sorry for the defaulting to it. But one of the things I wanted to do was to just show you some of the cool things that you can do. Uh, so when you zoom in, you can obviously go anywhere in the world. And uh, who's been to Versailles? Okay, great. Some of you have been there. Now, uh, one of the cool things that I want to let you know is right above this slider. By the way, I don't usually use this slider over here to go in and out. Um, it's very map. Quest e from back from the 90s, but I usually just use two finger zoom or the roller thing on the mouse or whatever type of computer I'm using. But one of the things that you can do is this is like the little street view person. It's a little orange person, yay, and it's flying through the air. And basically, wherever there's blue, you can drop the street view person, and that's where you're gonna be. And so I'll just drop it right there. And what you can see is now we're at the Palace of Versailles. And we're in what's called Street View. And so we can rotate around and look around. And uh, we can check it out. We can even like click out here and start wandering a little bit. And what's kind of fun right here is if you're in at Versailles with me wandering around, you can actually see the Street View bicycle, which is kind of fun. And so we can cruise over here. And we can actually just start navigating through the gardens and actually getting a glimpse of that. And I'll just turn around again. now. 
we, we can take our students anywhere in the world. And so let's say, I don't know, we're doing architecture. Let's say we're talking about history. Let's say we're talking about angles and geometry. Maybe my homework assignment for the day is just to have the students go explore. And so one of the things that you can do is this is a website. <laughs> Duh. Uh, this is a website. And so uh, one of the things that you can do is you can link to it. And that's amazing because now I can send my students directly there. And so I'm going to hit this little link up here. Now, oh, my Mac tricks aren't working. That's right. I've got to remember that. So I'm going to zoom back out. I'm just going to, I'm going to try to expand this a little bit. Command. Sorry, everybody. Let me see if it's showing up. I think it's getting a little bigger. But anyway, right up here there's a little uh, link and what I can do is actually open that up and uh, this is actually a link to this particular view. So if I want the students to see this view, I copy this link and I email it to them. And uh, just for kicks, oh, I, I guess I'm on the wrong computer. I wish I could transfer the link to my other computer. I'd post it in the feed right now. But um, that, that's a link to this actual place. And then if you email that to somebody and they actually click on it, they will go straight to that view and they'll be able to wander around just like you want them to. So that's really cool. The other thing that you can do is you can cl click this customizable HTML um, uh, code. And what's really great about HTML code is a lot of a lot of people like really freak out about it like well I don't know how to code and did you say scripting or code or something like that it really freaks them out but one of the things is that everyone knows how to cut and paste so all you gotta do is I'm on this I bet you it's not showing up oh it's totally not showing up so let me just go to this one uh, there's an HTML viewer I won't go customize it but you can actually customize it so it fits perfectly what you wanna do and you can customize uh, or copy that code and then go paste it in a website and uh, this is really bad. I didn't, um, I didn't go here previously and log in. I'm total confession. And so I'm just gonna go. Oh, yep. Now I get to my redirect. What are you seeing? Is it really exciting for you too? Okay. I'll probably misspell it. Yep. Probably do it again. Oh, yep. I'm gonna really concentrate this time. Oh, I'm in. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to show you how easy this is. Anyone use Moodle? Yay, Moodle. It's not, it's it's awesome, sort of, but it's really kind of clunky in some ways, too. Are you following along? Yeah, you're following along. And, and you don't have, this isn't a Moodle course, so don't worry about it. But what I just want to do is show you that you can go, go to your website. First, you can embed all sorts of cool things in your website, but you can also embed maps. So what I can do is go to my map and hit HTML and every every website has an HTML editor and you just paste in the code and then you hit update and then you hit save and now we're back at it and I just know that I'm going to have to hit refresh again so just bear with me and so anyway I scroll down to the bottom of my page and then it's really fun for my students because then my web page just isn't boring but it's actually kind of cool. Let's see it showing up. So it's kind of cool, but then my homework can just be like, hey, just go explore this place a little bit. Like, this is what we're talking about tomorrow. And that's one of the ways that you use maps. You connect your content to the map so that they can then go explore it. And then, you know, like if you're in elementary school or whatever, your kids aren't exploring the map in isolation. You're the cool teacher because your map's in your website. And then you go cruising around, and then that's really fun. Hopefully you're picking up on all this. And um, now if you use Google Sites, then it's money because you don't have to worry about a thing because Maps integrate super easily and you don't even have to do this stuff because you can all do it from the Sites menu. But um, anyway, see, look at these people. They look really happy and that's fun. You can even zoom in on them. They probably have uh, their faces blurred out. Yep, see, there they are. And so those people are now in my class and that's kind of fun. So uh, let's, let's hop back here. And, okay, Peggy's on Moodle. Okay, Maps is a great one. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, intensive. Check in the feed. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> All right. And so uh, that's those are like three ways I think I just showed you, but you can take your content and put it or put maps into your website so the students can interact with it um, in, in those particular places. So, uh, I, I mean, that's... That is pretty money because 
Let's see, I'm going to go back here. Sorry. Uh, so the, sorry, I got to double check this. Okay, uh, so basically the reason, the great thing about it is Google Maps is less intensive. There's less bandwidth. It's a web-based thing. And so because it's web-based, suddenly you have a link in that you can send any kid to any particular place. And, and that's really amazing. So then I'm just going to go up here and exit. And now you can see I'm at Versailles, and I lost my map. So then my navigation tip, this is like pro tip from Ben, is now I'm just going to get, I'm going to go down to this layers, because it's all about layers and knowing what layers you have. I'm just going to cross out Versailles. I'm going to go back to my cool places map, and now I should be looking at this. All right. Um, before we jump into the next thing, Did I, uh, am I still here? All right, thank you. Okay, um, so hopefully you heard 90% um, of that. Hey, I want to just show you that th there's one other thing that I should uh, go back to, and uh, before I get into the My Maps aspect of this, and this has been consistently demoted, demoted over and over and over and over, but at the very bottom, I always tell teachers this, I tell teachers, Sorry, I'm sharing my screen. I always tell teachers that whenever you're in like a Google product and you're like totally lost and you don't know like how to get back to that like center yourself, click the logo. So if I click the logo up here in the upper left hand corner, you can see that I'm going back to the kind of the straight up maps page. And at the very bottom of the page, there's something called Maps Labs. And I think it's a pop-up, so, oh, it, good, it shows up. So it shows up here, and there's some really fun little map labs here. And like I said, they're totally experimental. They've totally been demoted. Now they're like super tiny part of the page. But they have these distance tools, and they have um, some latitude and longitude tools. And uh, those are some kind of some fun little things that you can do. So like if I enabled my, my distance tool, one of the cool things that you could do is right down here by the key for distance I could click on it and I could say like how far is it from my school to my house and then I can measure it in rods and so if you happen to be a canoeer you know what a rod is but most of us probably should measure this in something less bizarro and that is um, I don't know like American football fields so you can do all sorts of different things and you can measure it. So take a look at uh, some of those measurement tools and if you're like um, somebody in your district who tells other people about cool things, like go tell the geography teachers about the latitude and longitude because some of their old school activities could be done using um, uh, the measurement tool and others could be done... Um, uh, and then I'll keep them until the next one. Others could be done um, using um, latitude and longitude. Are you Brandon? All right. Is this one I said? Hey, um, it, is that that's Becky? Becky, do you want to say hi quick? Hi. Uh, can hi. you your your Tony broadcast? You too. Yeah, oh, great, Tony. And these are two of my old teaching uh, buddies, um, and uh, awesome, doing awesome stuff. Could you just say hi? You're broadcasting to the world, so just share um, what you teach, uh, where you're from, and why you love Earth and maps. Um, <laughs> we both teach at Hopkins West Junior High. We teach Earth Science. Um, one of the big ways that we use Google Earth is to have the kids explore where they have or where earthquakes and volcanoes are happening around the world and to see kind of real life earthquake patterns and what that tells them about different plate and movement of the crust. Okay. Yeah. Tony? That's good. What she said. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. And you guys are working on the curriculum, huh? Yes. Sorry that we were talking with our mic. Oh, that's okay. Just so you know, you can mute it too. So like above the screen somewhere. I see there's that. A mute <laughs> yeah. 
Perfect. <laughs> you must have heard about our trip. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Okay, so uh, let's move on. You know, you can um, uh, most of these topics can um, go on for forever, right? Um, you, you could spend all day on Earth. You could spend all day on maps. And so, what we want to do is get to the guts here. Let's create a let's create a map. I'm going to go back to my layers again. the The link for this is in the um, is in the comment stream, so you can go check that out. I'm just going to go to my links up here. And what we're going to do next is I want to show you how you can create this different content. I want to show you how you can create this different content. So um, I created a map called Cool Places. Um, I linked it to all of you. So this is the teacher, uh, the teacher moment where I basically show you how you do this. You don't want to just, I'll back up, sorry. Just like all these other Google Apps, they have a collaborate button or a share button. And so if you click collaborate, basically what happens is, let me see, it's popping up. It is. Um, you can invite people one at a time, and that's really not that cool. So what I generally do is I just allow anybody to edit the map, and then I just send students a link to the map. And then what they can do is actually participate and add to it and collaborate with it. And that's how I choose to do it. it. Just it's just a little bit easier, and the sharing feature on Maps is isn't quite as well baked as it is as, for example, in Drive. So basically, what you do is if you're on this map, hopefully you are, because you can follow the link to it. Just scroll back in the feed if you need it. But what you can do is hit the big red edit button, and what's really cool is when you hit the edit button, these three little icons pop up here, sort of in the upper left hand corner and I'm going to just move around the map a little bit. And so we have these three icons pop up. Now, what I generally do is over here in the description on the left-hand side of the page, I name the map. Inevitably, what will happen with every student, every teacher, every conference, and everywhere where you talk about this, somebody will start editing over here. And what I always do is say, I'm always like, no, don't edit over there. So you have to like make a big song and dance with the students. Like, don't edit that. You edit the map, not the actual sidebar. And so um, I, I went back just to provide emphasis to that point. But the big idea here is that that's where you actually generate your, um, you make your content um, in the map. So this is really simple, and what I'd love for you all to just do is, is to just um, add, a, add a place marker. So I'm just going to click. Uh, if you click and then even take your hands off the mouse, you can see that the little cursor dances around. So I'm a big fan of this area up here, um, right along the border of Minnesota and Canada. So I'll just pop a, a location there. It's called the Boundary Waters. So then what I can do is... Boundary Waters Canoe Area, and uh, this is like pro tip number 12, is if you click on this little place marker here, you can have custom, um, custom place marks. You can take it one step further by adding your own icons. I'm not going to do it for the sake of time, but talk about geeking out. You can have custom icons. If you do export to uh, Google Earth, you will start to run into problems. The, the next thing I really want to show you, so now you have a custom icon. When you're doing this with students, you have to come up with really good naming conventions for the place markers. So I would do BWCA Ben. Now, if I could go get the maps people on the horn and say, like, change this now, when you load it or when you open up a place mark and you place your place mark, it goes to plain text by default, and I, don't, I can't think of a good reason for that. And I wish it was rich text because that's awesome. I always tell kids it's like totally rich and that's where you want to be. And anyway, um, what you have here then is your typical editor so that you can um, 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 add anything you want. So I can go to BWCA um, on, on the web and I can search for images. For some reason I'm searching for permits. So I'm just going to take that off and find a better, cooler, naturey pick. And I will. Oh, here, here's a good pick. I'm just going to copy that image URL. I'm going to go back to my map. Hopefully, you're still following along. And so I just got the image of the um, the image from the web, and now I'm going to paste it. And when I paste it, then it pops into the place mark. Isn't that cool? And then I can customize it. And the writing prompt is use descriptive language. So this is a language arts assignment. Isn't that 
cool everybody. And then what you can do is be like, smell the pines. Ah, and then I'm a, it's also a blogger assignment because then you have to write uh, normally. And listen to the crazy loons. Do you guys like my story? So anyway, that's what the Boundary Waters is to me, although this would be more of a bog, so there'd probably be some frogs croaking, and I could talk about that. But anyway, then I hit OK. And here's pro tip number 14. What I tell kids is after you, whatever you do, Make sure after every place mark, hit save in the left-hand column, and then hit done, and then go look at it, how cool it looks. Oh, uh, you used to click on the map to get that. I don't know. But what I'm going to do is go down here and just click on it, and then I can see it. So it looks like Ruskin's view. I don't know who did that, but make sure that you use your really descriptive language in the Fern Grotto Cave. Okay, awesome. I think those are the three new ones. So anyway, that is just in the snapshot of how you add content. So now imagine doing that over and over and over and over. Oh, see, that's a much better description. Thanks, Diane. Um, so that's a really nice place mark, um, all nicely composed. And then let's look at this one, too. Awesome. So then what I would say to this student, I'd say, okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to, um, Diane, I see that you got a really great start there. And what we need to do now is add images and then add links. And so I actually, somewhere buried in my resources, there's actually a, um, somewhere buried in my resources, there's actually a way to um, um, embed links. And um, I have actually a whole rubric that tells you how to actually, um, um, a nice rubric that basically tells every kid that they have to have a picture, an image, a link, a title that's appropriately titled, and an icon to match it. And one of the great things about that is that this is a project then that you no longer actually have to grade. So you don't have to actually grade it. It's something that you give the kids the rubric and they actually go through and check it off all of themselves. And that's how I handle these assignments because if I had every kid do five and I have 100 kids or 90 kids and then all of a sudden you're, you're correcting hundreds of place markers, you just have them police each other and you do quality control through the whole thing. And so that's my tip of actually doing this with students. Oh, there's a whole chat here that I've just totally been ignoring. Oh, good. All right. Excellent. <laughs> uh, I'm going to check the feed over here to see if there's anything fun. All right. Uh, the next thing I, I'll just quickly show you uh, before we uh, move on is, and then I'll, I'll, I'm going to switch gears to Google Earth, is obviously here is a place mark uh, that is, um, has a YouTube video in it. So you can hit play on the YouTube video. It's kind of formatted weird, sorry. But this is the Badlands at night with the Milky Way. And so one of the cool things that you can do is actually embed YouTube videos. And I think for the sake of time, what I'll do is I'll just show you uh, what, what that actually looks like. And then um, I'll let you explore that on your own. So my places. Sorry. Edit. So again, if I hit uh, the map and I want to do Hudson Bay, I can create that. Naming convention, always super appropriate. I'm just going to put an old standard tack in this one. And for this particular one, there is an Edit HTML button. And if you click the Edit HTML button, well, what the heck, it's not that hard to do, right? So I go to YouTube. And let's see. Oh, here's my tester video. I'll just click on that because I was testing this earlier today. Uh, when you're on YouTube, below videos, let me just double check that you're watching. OK, you are good. Um, if you go to the share button, and these things are changing daily right now, you can just copy the HTML code. I'm actually going to make a really small video size. Uh, copy the HTML code from YouTube. Go back to your map, and you paste that in, and you hit OK. 
Now, this was the pro tip, I think, number 14. But you go back and you hit save and you hit done. If you do any edits, it's just my experience, if you make any edits after you post in that HTML code for the YouTube video, it will almost always fail or break or cause some sort of problem. And so then just to check, what I'm going to do is go down here and click on it, and then you can see that my video is there waiting. The other cool thing that I'll just show you quick is that we're in edit mode. You can drag and drop these icons over here. So if I'm in edit mode on the side of the page, if I wanted to move Diane's up, I could just take it and drag it all the way to the top because I want everyone to see that example because it's a good one. Um, I can just take that one, move it all the way to the top, hit save, hit done, and now you can see that I've reordered them. So um, anyway, that's, that's just a little nutshell about that. So that's kind of like um, the sky's the limit there with uh, creating different place markers. Here, let me get rid of this ugly window. Uh, the last thing I'm showing you, and then I promise I'm moving, is this is a KML file. And so in the underneath cool places over here, you can see that there's a KML and a Google Earth logo. If you click on that, what it does is it downloads that file um, to your computer. Big surprise. And then what you can actually do is click on that and open it in Google Earth. So I'm just going to do that for the sake of doing that. And now I think what I need to do is hop back over here. And now what I did is I clicked on that file, that KML file. And now what we're going to do is actually look at it in Google Earth. So uh, for now, for only for the first time, I am going to now click into Google Earth. I'm, I'm going to click Share um, the window with you. And now what you're looking at is Google Earth. Hopefully that is true. That is true. Uh, so, sorry, I want to make sure that I'm in the right screen. Sorry. I'm going to go to screen share, go to Google Earth, and hop over there. And I just want to make sure that I'm not talking to the wrong audience or to the wrong uh, talking at you with not having anything on my screen. So hopefully Google Earth is up right now. Okay, so uh, some features that you need to know about Google Earth before, without like <laughs> spending five hours with it. This is the confusing, this is the hard part. But the first thing I want to do is I want to show you that you have these temporary places. And temporary places are anything that you create. Um, and Google Earth you do have to save. You have to totally save things, otherwise they disappear. And you will have a story, because I have several. But one of the cool things is, is if I click on this little place marker here, what you will see is the place marker that I created in Google Earth. Sorry, I'm multitasking. Thanks, Peggy. Now. Uh, one of the things that you can then do is, what's awesome is I created this in Google Maps. Now we're looking at it in Google Earth. Now kids think that's amazing. So one of the things I guess I just have to show you is, um, uh, first of all, if you go up to File and you go to Save, Save My Places. And so what I want to do is I'm just saving that. Oh, I'm getting a pinwheel. This could be bad. Okay, so what I'm doing is I save my places, but I what I should have done is said save to my places. And so now what I've done is I've added cool places into my places. So everything down here is temporary. And these are, you know, I think you understand this, but these are the little check marks here too. I wish I could swoop in and show you this, but I can't. Uh, but there's a little triangles here. And now you can see all of the place markers that we created in Google Earth are all actually hanging out right here waiting for us, which is really cool. Now, uh, so here is a little tip. Like um, I showed you the, the, the tour. So we were flying from place to place at the beginning and you're thinking to yourself, hey, that looks really cool. Um, I wish I could do that. One really easy way to do that is to click on a folder to do the check mark, and let me go down here. I'm, I'm going to uncheck that. 
Um, let's see here. I'm going to go to Cool Places. You can see that I have the whole folder checked. And if I have the whole folder checked, I can hit the Play Tour button. And now instantly I have a little slideshow that is flying from place to place. And this is like the bandwidth thing, so it's going to look like uh, Minecraft for you all. It's going to be really generic. But it's going to spend about three to five seconds. You can actually customize it, and it's going to spend a little time on each place and fl fly from place to place. And I'll let it do one more because I want to make a point here that you see how every time it flies to a place, it's going top down, and it's just kind of looking kind of uh, boring. That's not how we make it sexy. And so what I want to do is show you how to make it sexy real quick. And, and this is like totally a pro tip. You don't have to like get into this, but I'll use um, Diane's Fern Grotto Cave um, as an example, so we'll fly there. And when we go there, you can see it goes top down like that. Oh, it totally doesn't. I clicked it differently, so it didn't. But let's say I wanted to zoom in here and make this look a different way so I can zoom in and I wanted to highlight the coastline. I can customize exactly how I want the view to look. And then if I hit Control and click on it, I can actually hit Snapshot View. And from now on, that is how Google Earth will fly into that location. Now, just, to, just so we have another example, we'll fly to the Badlands. Hey, Ben. Yep. Um, you're probably sharing a window and not sharing your whole screen, so... I think you did a, like a right click or a control click on that one to do. I the totally menu. did. Oh. And the menu didn't show up, so there may be some things that aren't showing up because oh my it's gosh. Thank over you. your screen. No problem. So I won't do too much more of that, but uh, when you right click, uh, what happens is uh, a menu pops up, and that's not going to show up in the screen sharing. And there, but there's a little option in there that says snapshot view, and all you have to do is select that and it actually checks that. So I'm just going to do it really quick here. And what I'm going to do is Badlands. I want to get the full scope of the Badlands, so I'm going to zoom like this. I'm going to be like, that looks awesome for this purpose. I'm going to control click. You don't see the menu. I do. It's awesome. I'm going to snapshot view. Now we're going to just zoom back out and start over. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I checked all of I did this I checked all of them so they all show up now. And just a really easy way to do a tour is to hit the play button. And now what's going to happen is it's going to fly in exactly the way I set it up to fly in. And now when you go to the Badlands, it's also going to fly in exactly the way I wanted it to fly into the Badlands. And so because this is an intro to Google Earth session, um, I'm going to pause it. It's going to play that whole tour. And so what you can then do, though, is you can actually save it. Um, and it's gonna, I'm going to get a pop-up again. And you can name it. And then you have this file that you can play again and again and again. So my little strategy when you're using Google Earth, and I think, I'll hop back over here to my little uh, my my little strategy uh, is oftentimes at school we're challenged to be in two places at one time and uh, you can create these little tours like just place markers and have it fly from place to place to place. You're getting the kids engaged in the topic for the day um, and you're having them um, explore that um, while you're in the hallway monitoring the students because that's where the admin says you need to go. And then I guarantee that when you start your lesson that day, it's going to be like, bam, I got Google Earth going constantly on my, my whiteboard. All the kids are going to be huddled around it. They're going to be like hooked from the start. And that's why this is an engagement tool. This is why you use it. Um, so you know, we're getting to the end. And I'm, I'm going to keep checking the feed. But one of the things I want to do is challenge. I did challenge a couple of my staff to watch this today. And so for those of you watching this from Hopkins, Email me how you want to use Google Earth. I'll work with you, and then we're going to be good on the credits, OK? So that's your, that's your challenge. The rest of you, if you want to just challenge yourself to think about how could I use Google Earth uh, to kick off a class. So uh, my example here that I often tell everybody is um, we're going to go back to the whole layers bit, all right? Um, 
we're going to go back to the layers bit. And the fact here is that I'm switching to the screen. What does everybody in the world always talk about? Yeah, the weather, exactly. Um, so what we're going to do is one of the cool things down here in layers, what I like to tell students, by the way, too, is I close up what we don't need. So now what I'm looking at is I close up search. I never use search. It's totally not as good as a Google search engine for some reason. And then places, if I'm not using them, I close them up. And then it just helps me stay organized. These are the pro tips after like dating Google Earth for five years. Okay. Everyone talks about the weather. So next time there's a big weather phenomenon coming towards you, like, oh, I don't know, like a hurricane or whatever, uh, click the weather tab, you know, zoom out, and then let's look at the weather live, you know? Like, those are the actual clouds. Like, oh, here's another pro tip. Hit the letter N when you're in Google Earth, and it will automatically center you. Um, because eventually you're going to get it all mixed up. And so, um, like, for example, I could turn off all these weather things except the cloud banks, and these are the real live clouds. So obviously this is cool for hurricane tracking, minus the people that are in the hurricane, but you can actually watch the hurricane come in and track its cloud development and uh, look at the eye and all those cool things. And so there's some really cool thing ways just to use this as a starter. Like, ladies and gents, you don't have to like get into the coding and know all about this tool. You just have to know how to look at, um, like, click the weather thing. Let's just talk about it for a bit. Okay, I don't know how to do anything else, class. We're done. And then you get excited because they get excited, and then you're like, all right, I'm going to do more of this. And so anyway, that's a great thing to know about is the weather tab. Um, obviously, um, I've already highlighted some things. Uh, there's 3D buildings, right? So um, you can go anywhere and explore it. So if I just zoom into Minneapolis, right, you can you can see the realistic buildings, and so I can start to see downtown, and then I can look around, and that's pretty cool. Uh, you can see the new stadium and look around. Like, how cool is that? They actually have the mirroring on the side of the building because that building's made of glass. Like, that's not cool at all. Uh, so they also have this other gallery. So uh, my colleagues that popped into this chat for a while, they use volcanoes and they use earthquakes a lot. Um, I know I'm a science teacher, but whatever. It's awesome. This is an awesome inquiry assignment. So you basically say to your students, hey, take a look here. Diane's from California. She can appreciate this. Uh, but basically you look up here and you're like, um, ladies and gentlemen, can we talk about science and patterns? Do you see any patterns? And so this can become an inquiry assignment where you basically have the students check various boxes and have them look at it. I know it's straight out of the box, and it's totally um, um, like right up my alley. But there's lots of other things here. There is like um, there's the um, I'm blanking on her name, the chimpanzee woman. <laughs> Not the chimpanzee woman, but Jane Goodall. Uh, she has a thing in here. There's uh, Rumsey historical maps. I'm a huge fan of those. I think there's some really awesome stuff in there. Uh, and uh, those are some of the favorites uh, of mine, so you should make sure that you check out those. There's these great global awareness things that, um, that you can check out. And it, again, it's layers and layers and layers and layers and layers, and you have to choose what layers you want to look at. Uh, the last thing I'm going to highlight, and then I'm hopefully going to pop into the chat, and hopefully Diane will still be there, and she can share some of her favorite layers, is there is something called the Google Earth Gallery. So right underneath the Layers tab, there's Google Earth Gallery. And these are all layers that you can basically just turn on. So for example, here's the Lewis and Clark map. So let's just go back to that, because you know a lot of there's probably some social studies teachers out there. And what we can actually do is uh, look at that. And so now what we're doing, so I'm going to go and turn off some of these other layers now because now they're, it's kind of annoying that they're in the way. And I'll turn off the volcanoes. And so now what we're looking at, I'm going to have to go up into my places. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm just having to go in and actually clean this up a bit because there's lots of different things showing that I don't necessarily want to have showing right now. I'm going to turn off cool places. And so here is a Lewis and Clark map historical, awesome, you can compare it with the real one, you can click on all the different place marks and see what um, uh, what camp it was, what was the latitude, what was the longitude, and actually use this as a companion if you were reading it. 
and there's some really other great ma other great maps that you should uh, check out and um, explore. So again, um, there's a lot of features up here. Um, not only can you go to the Earth, but you can go to Mars right now. Mars is a hot topic because of the Mars Science Lab that's up there. Um, there's distance tools up here so that you don't even have to focus on. Um, you could have real world measurements for like story problems and different things. And there's some other neat stuff uh, that you can uh, check out. What I'm going to do is pop off. Uh, Diane, before we go, thanks for really, I appreciate you hanging out. Um, is there any like showstopper Google Earth tips and uh, you're a fan of that you want to make sure that everyone knows about? Yeah, let me turn my microphone back on. I'm actually just um, adding another comment to the, to the event stream there. Uh, but um, when you mentioned volcanoes and earthquakes, uh, and I, it's funny, you mentioned volcanoes and earthquakes and then also Lewis and Clark, two different projects that we did in Google Earth when I was teaching elementary and middle school. Um, one of the things you can do is when you're trying to show how the volcano came about, you can, um, you can get an overlay of the tectonic plates. All you need to do is just go to do a Google search, tectonic plates, file type colon KMZ or KML, and you're going to, you can get a, a file you can just open up in your Google Earth. And that'll help you to determine if the volcano formed along plate boundaries or if it's a hot spot out in the middle of a plate, like um, Kilauea is a hot spot volcano out in the middle of that big plate, right? So it, it helps when you're trying to further illustrate the, like, the location of you know, all this tectonic activity, basically, between um, earthquakes and volcanoes. You can show the plate boundaries. And um, I'm not sure how, how much it gets into the smaller plates, but it's got the big major plates. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know that it shows all the fault lines, but it does show the plates. Um, but there's probably fault line maps as well that, that I haven't looked up. Yeah, but there's all kinds of stuff fault that, lines for sure. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that people have already created that you can go and, and do. Um, and then you can just have um, the kids create content together, like places that their family you know, history took place in, like where their ancestors came from, or even just places they've gone on vacations. Um, yeah, so my first can... my first maps assignment is always, and it takes like thirty minutes uh, at least, uh, is to find your favorite restaurant, um, link me to their website, put a photo of it, and locate it, and then name it properly. Like that, it, you have to do that before you get into the content. So that's that's my tip, and uh, it's just kind of a fun way to bring it uh, to to get into it, and something that you can add to all year, which is really fun. Yeah. I've done uh, that when I've other, done trainings too. Uh, when I'm in a city other, that I don't know. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying I've done that when, when I've done trainings too. Especially if I'm not in my area, um, I have the people who are from that area create uh, place marks for all the different restaurants in that area, so I know where to go. Well, that's that's that, that, that's what you did at IST. I think that was cool. Uh, probably yeah. Uh, so uh, I guess what Diane also said is that you can look for the content that already exists. You know, you everyone teachers do this all the time. They recreate everything that already is perfect. Just kidding. I do it too. Uh, so what you can do is uh, go on to Google Advanced Search and you can know some quick uh, search tips, but you can go into the Advanced Search as well and uh, dive into um, um, file type. And one of the file types is KML or KMZ right over here. Uh, KMZ or KML files and the Z just means zipped. Uh, but basically you can just click, double click those, they open up in Google Earth and you can look at it and be like, is this something I want to start with and then build on? And so uh, that's that. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do uh, here, gang, is I'm going to just, uh, I want to make sure that I point you to just uh, some final resources that exist. And like I said, I'm going to toss all these in into the comments of the YouTube video too. So if you've really managed to watch this whole time, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Uh, but really, it's about hopefully you got ten, some ten tips there that um, that you can run with and that you can use. Um, there's God, there's so much stuff. I'm just remembering now. I'm like, I wish I, sh I should just go show them that really quick. But to, but to be honest, there's lots of stuff, and you can do full day workshops on all of this. And um, all my resources are here on this page. There's lots of great stuff happening uh, for the. Um, EDU on air series, and that you should uh, make sure you check some of those out. Uh, the other thing I'm just going to mention is that if you're watching live, make sure you follow the hashtag uh, GTAMTV. 
uh, tomorrow. It's the Google Teacher Academy at Mountain View, and there's going to be a ton of cool stuff being shared on that hashtag. And uh, if you're watching after the fact, make sure you go check out some of the Google Certified Teacher resources. They're phenomenal. So again, um, uh, thanks for hanging out with me. My name is Ben Friesen. Um, I'm a Google Certified Teacher, Google App Certified Trainer. Um, I do work in the Midwest and all over the country uh, doing trainings on various Google Apps and other related things. So if you're interested, please contact me. I can be found at flippededucation.com. And uh, again, I appreciate you hanging out with me and uh, getting uh, some of these tips. And thanks a lot. This will be available on YouTube, so check it out again and pass it on. Appreciate it, everybody. Thanks, Diane, and to everyone who jumped in to hang out.